Is service a form of spiritual practice? It can be. It should be. But we have to talk about spiritual practice, what that is, in a certain regard, or a light that enables us to equate these things properly. Service and spiritual practice. Spiritual practice should be a form, just in itself, of serving the total. So when you sit in silence, peace, you're offering service. Then you are resonating or radiating peace to all beings. See, it's a moment well experienced on this planet. And some say one second of beautiful peace is worth the whole incarnation, or thousands of lifetimes without it. And so what other forms might spiritual practice take? Well, of course, basically it takes the form of breathing and living, right? What you're, what you're feeling, what you're breathing, what you're thinking, what you're remembering, and what you're saying. And what you're doing, all of these have to be purified. See? These are also called the aggregates, right? In the Dharma, or yoga. See? Aggregates. Feeling, perception. See? And so on. Remembering. Being conscious. Knowing, and so on, so forth all the way to being. And so each one of these planes are purifiable. So, you, in other words, you, you want to be known as a person with pure feeling. That's the service then. But you get your feeling level to the, to the degree of purity, right? Unpolluted, negative, right? free of negative emotion and negative feelings and dark emotions and hateful emotions and all of that stuff. See? Painful stuff. Then you're, you're offering a great service to others. Now, sometimes if you share negative emotions with a negative person, they appreciate that. It's a form of service to them and validates their negative experience. And so this is the relativity of service, the relativity of sharing at, at an emotional level. But going back to spiritual practice, that means higher practice, say purificational practice, refined practice. Then this is a really a matter of purification. So that what you're putting out there at the feeling level is goodness, light, healing, enlightenment, thought, silence. See? Mm. Healing most importantly. Love. Mm. Mm. And so it goes up, up to, uh, you can say up to chakras, up to planes of consciousness. Okay. Can one be a spiritual practitioner without having any practices as such. A spiritual practitioner without practice. What about it without the spiritual? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Can you be a spiritual practitioner without being a spiritual practitioner? Of course. <laughs> in other words, can you, can you not know that you're doing something uh, in a spiritual sense? Yes, you can not know. Some people are moved to do things from the unconscious, instinctually, psychically, and that is part of the spiritual practice. And they don't know why they're doing certain things exactly, but they know they have to do it. So it's, they're being used to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And is it possible for everyone to be used that way? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about conscious. So the person is there to do what it is from a more, let's say, I'm looking for, uh, say, concept, but with more dedication, say, more commitment to doing what it is, more knowing. What should one do if a practice becomes a routine? Well, hopefully it's a good routine, right? You want good routines. <laughs> well, well, let's say a routine <laughs> devoid of well, the, you, going you, through emotions. Going to work every day is a good routine. If you don't, yeah. you don't get paid. <laughs> What's there not to like about a routine that pays you, right? So that's the routine. So it's not about the routine, it's who and what. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
depends on whether or not you determine the routine to be good for you and others. It's up to you. It, it, at a certain point, can it become just a, a habit? In well, it's like music. Emotions? Let's talk about music. That's a routine. Yeah. And some of it can be good routines. And I have met so many musicians that hate their routine. So they really hate themselves and they hate their music, but they, they got to do it for work. They're stuck in that. I'm not stuck in it. That's sad. But, they, they, but to, listen, at least they have music and they're happy about that. And I asked them, would you rather life without music? Since it's so burdensome to you, so painful for you to think about yourself. And I said, no, they run out of music now. So at least they can hear music. They're still in the music while they can hear things they love and they like. If they can't play it or circumstances don't warrant a certain level of evolution regarding music, then they can still love music, for sure. You can love music and not play it. And music is for everybody to love in some way. It's not required that everybody play it. And then you have players who don't love music. You have that paradox here. Some are designed to play, some are designed to listen. So how does one know they're doing the right practices? Feeling good. All right, and that's a rather strange phraseology, feeling good, you can feel good about it, but I mean feeling really good. Feeling that you are, you're unfolding, feeling that you're going deeper you're, and you're expanding, feeling that you're getting better at it and finding more and you're moving from the material to the spiritual, and then you know it's, it's better. Okay. I'm not saying leave the material, no. Use the material, but don't use the material at the expense of losing the spiritual. That's very expensive. We need more spiritual to survive properly than just material. Because we are inner beings, we're not just outer beings, we're not just external beings, we're not just robots. robots. We have feelings. Sometimes what we do doesn't heal our feelings doesn't heal our damaged selves, doesn't heal it. We need healing. You need special healing. And if you can't get it with your, in your routine world, then you, you should ask for it. Ask for a special help for your special healing needs. Say that nothing you do with anybody you know makes a difference. Whether it's marriage, or children, or family, uh, and you know, a lot of people in those situations that seem on the outside, oh, perfect situation, are rotting inside, because I've met many people, women and men, who are rotting inside, because even their religion doesn't reach them in a certain way. The religion's not interested in saving them. Religions aren't interested in saving you, in a sense. They're, they're interested in educating you to make better choices for yourself, so that you save yourself or you destroy yourself, based upon your own actions, your own discretion. And when one goes inward and deeper, does it always manifest on the outside as well? It, we like to think it should. The idea is to have a guide for what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, have a guide you trust. Whether it's family guide you trust or a friend guide you trust is better. See? A guide you trust is probably known by other people, as I am. Known by others in the music. So I want people to be deeper players, better players. That means they have to clear up certain things that obstruct that. Say, the real, the true, the deep, say, and the spiritual. And is there an inner master to guide us through our practice? Well, theoretically there is, but who, who knows what that is? Who has access to it? Say. So we can use the concept, the inner master, and everybody says, oh, I'm going to leave it up to the inner master. That means they're going to do nothing. See, so they just want something to hang it on. <laughs> Someone to blame for it. <laughs> right? They want to blame Jesus and, or all the others. They want to blame them. So it's not up to me, it's up to Jesus. It's whatever he wants. <laughs> well, you'd be in bad shape if Jesus showed up and said, What are you saying? I want that? Are you crazy? All right. Jesus might say, have you known your Father in heaven? Have you been to heaven yet, kids? 
<laughs> know you not that you are in hell on earth, kids? <laughs> right. Come on. So just playing, people. So should practice begin within the tradition? No, practice should begin when your heart is ready for practice and your body's ready to act on it. Because your body's got to be part of that practice, not just your ideas. See? And one of the first things in practice, uh, certain kinds of practice, is your ability to be still. Not when you're asleep or dead, right? But when you're awake and strong, right? you're still vibrant and alive. And, and more active. So you just stop. Because right? that's imitating your unconsciousness. That's collapsing the gulf between the conscious and the unconscious. See? You need to be part of your unconscious. And it needs to be okay with you and you need to be okay with it. See? So you need to sit in silence and get over it. Yeah? Get over your struggle about what is spiritual and what is not. Get over it. Just stop, look and listen to the inner. And if you can't, then see if there's somebody who can help you to do that. Because religious people don't always have the answers. See, they program people. They're culture. See? And don't doubt a musician could know these things. It could be anybody. And a cab driver could know more. <laughs> They're not only wizards of the streets, they might have some other knowledge for you. Who know who's driving you, driving you, or flying you, for that matter. Right. We're all informed by the same source, by the way, people. Yeah. Just depends on whose heart is clear enough to get the best stuff. Yeah. Who wants the highest, highest level of wisdom? Who wants that? And well, what is true? Who wants to be a, a conduit for that light? Because it's light. Up there it's just light. Down here it's just dirt down here. And beneath this is darkness. And there's the super light, the clear light, right? The angelic light. I don't mean the demonic light. I mean the de angelic light, the good light, the benign light, the light of grace, peace, beauty, harmony, see? healing, love, yeah. majesty. Yeah. So, uh, does a change in life conditions uh, warrant a change in practices? No, not necessarily. Depends on what your practice is. That's why it's good to have a guide to set you straight on all that. Uh, yeah, you can be in the middle of the war and have a spiritual guide and have, have great help, assist you. You can be under the worst conditions, you might need a guide. You can be under the best conditions, and you might need a guide. Yeah. And just because your ego is all high tech or powerful and big, you know, big ego, humongous ego, all powerful self doesn't mean you have it together. Nor does it mean because you're big and powerful as an ego that your people have it together either. Watch your people. See? Mm -hmm. See, people need spiritual protection, not just material isolation protection. They need spiritual protection from the inside out. <clears throat> not everything that comes from the outside is good. Inside out.